One of the most disgusting things that a woman during the Second World War could have done, in the eyes of many, was to sleep with the enemy or the Germans. Across France, as the Allies liberated villages and towns, they saw a huge shocking scene, which became known as the Ugly Carnival. The French people were relieved that the Germans had been forced out of their areas and homes, but then the French resistance sought to punish women who were linked to what was known as horizontal collaboration. The French persecuted thousands of women who were forced to undergo a humiliating and horrific ordeal inside of towns and cities, where they were forced to run the gauntlet of an angry mob, but they were also forced to have their heads shaved, and they were also daubed in Nazi symbols on their heads and bodies. Some women were even killed by their ordeal, and it was a scene that haunted many Allied soldiers who saw it, and they were disgusted at the actions of the French. Join us today to look at the most humiliating punishment for women during World War II, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. During the Second World War, the German army captured and controlled countries and huge swathes of land, as Hitler's soldiers rampaged across borders and quickly forced many countries to surrender. They were then, following this, be stationed inside of the lands, and they attempted to govern many of the countries as Nazi states, and were trying to impose their brutal and barbaric policies, and rules and laws. The German soldiers would try to settle in the areas. For example, following capturing Paris, many men visited the city's brothels and coffee shops, and were photographed doing this. Lots of German soldiers tried to look for women to court, or to treat awfully in assault, but there were many women who inside of France would voluntarily, of their own accord, fall in love with German soldiers, and there were also many women who would of their own accord sleep with the German soldiers. Some women were led to sleep and collaborate with the enemy out of desperation, as the occupation continued, and they saw German officers as a vital lifeline as conditions got tougher and food became scarce and they believed the Germans would give them food in exchange for certain favours. The Germans wanted to be in Paris, and they saw the city as a large cat house, where they could do practically what they wanted, and the soldiers who took the country, especially those of a superior rank, did have certain things to offer French women. Following the war they could offer them a future and marriage, and many French women would go back with their German boyfriends to Germany, and would start a family. Lots of women in France may have also been lonely as their husbands and boyfriends may have joined the French army to fight the Germans, which is why they may have sought solace in the arms of their enemies, and some women genuinely fell in love. There are images of women voluntarily entering prisoner of war camps to be with their German boyfriends, but across Europe there were thousands of children born to German fathers. In France it's believed that 200,000 babies were born to German fathers and French mothers, and in Norway there were 12,000 babies born in this way. Even on the remote Channel Islands, almost a thousand children were fathered by occupation soldiers. However, this was seen by many across the land, and especially those in resistance groups, as a complete disgrace. In many countries, the women who slept with the enemy were considered collaborators, and were said to have been complicit in the evils of the occupation armies. It was said to have been horizontal collaboration, the romantic and sexual relationship that French women had with German occupation forces, following the capitulation of the nation's army. But following the liberation of France, there were many women who were punished in a horrific way for being collaborators, and the scenes of the ugly carnival as it was known was shocking. The French went very far, but in other lands such as Norway, many women who slept with the enemy were transported to other lands for exile, and some were even thrown in prison. The children of these relationships were also considered shameful, but in France the torture of the ugly carnival was harrowing for many people to witness. Women were rounded up by the French resistance and local authorities, and they were then gathered in town squares. The women often feared for their lives in front of huge crowds of thousands of people, and they were forced to have their heads shaved. The authorities would use scissors to hack the hair from their heads, and then throw it on the floor. Across Europe this had been done for centuries, and it was seen as a way of punishing women. The Nazis during the Second World War would call for the Nazi state to punish German women in this way, who were accused of sleeping with foreign prisoners, or non-Aryans. They were then in the same way punished by having their heads shaved. But the crowds in France were incredibly angry, and the scenes were like a medieval-style form of public punishment and humiliation. 
The crowds would be baying for the punishment of the women, and following having their heads shaved, the women were then forced to run the gauntlet through the crowds. They were then subjected to beatings, where people would try and kick and hit them. Men and children and other women would spit and throw things at them. They were also screamed at, and some were forced to do this. They then had their clothes ripped from them. Some women were left bloodied by the attacks, and many were covered in tar to make them stand out even more. They were often drawn on with tar and paint, especially with Nazi symbols, such as swastikas put on their foreheads, showing everyone what their crime was. It was mob rule, and it was shocking. Lots of these women had let's remember slept with Germans to try and survive, or genuinely because they fell in love, or they wanted to make their occupation more straightforward and easier, but there were a large number of women who had done no such thing, but they were suspected of sleeping with the enemy, and often false reporting led to innocent women being shaved and tortured. One eyewitness said of these women in the hands of their tormentors that they had the look of a hunted animal, and that in one city, the French were rounding up collaborators, cutting off their hair and burning it in huge piles, which could be smelt a mile away. Women collaborators were forced to run the gauntlet and were really beaten. When the Allies saw the sights they were shocked, and one war photographer who captured images of the horror would say, I saw four girls who had been led through the street, and I rushed towards them to take a photograph. At once I found myself at the front of the procession, and the local people thought I was a female soldier who had captured them or something like that, and I was kissed and congratulated at the same time, as slaps and spit rained down on the unfortunate girls. A private secretary of Winston Churchill in Normandy, named Jock Colville, would see the ugly scenes of the carnival, and he reported that, I watched an open lorry drive past, to the accompaniment of boos and catcalls from the French populace, with a dozen miserable women in the back, every hair on their heads shaved off. They were in tears, hanging their heads in shame. Whilst disgusted by the cruelty, I reflected that we British had not known invasion or occupation for some 900 years, so we were not the best judges. Some women who worked in German factories were also targeted for helping their war effort, but as mentioned there were many innocent women who were accused and were then subjected to this horror. The reason for the harsh treatment was that France had suffered under German occupation. For example, the members of the French resistance often faced horrific ordeals of torture and execution if they were discovered by the Germans. But many women were later targeted further and were shot dead by French soldiers, if they were found to having been in receipt of a German weapon in their homes, and they were shot before they even had time to explain why they had got these weapons. Some women were shot, even when they were gathering weapons for the resistance, but there was in a sense a fear across the nation about women supporting the German military. One report from an American would claim that he came across four women in German uniforms, in France who were working as snipers in trees, and that five more women were like this found in a town. It's believed that 20,000 women were known to have been victims of this humiliating and painful form of torture in France. In Paris, the anger went further, and some women who worked inside of the brothels were dragged out of their places of work, and were kicked to death for accepting German clients. There was one woman who was forced to house German soldiers in her home, and then was punished in this way, but she had no other choice. The scenes and sights of the ugly carnival were some of the most disturbing of the Second World War, there was a huge amount of violence inflicted upon the French women accused of sleeping with the enemy. It was seen by the French resistance as the biggest crime a French woman could commit, and to the battle hardened Allied soldiers, seeing this sort of behaviour brought a bad taste to their mouths, and often they were powerless to prevent and stop it. Such was the anger in the streets. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, Thank you for watching.